up here? How's it going off? What am I on? <laughs> well, I'm on my R3. That's what I'm on, actually. Yeah, for any of you who do know or don't know, yeah, I got three bikes. MT-09 WR250X. I love it. And my R3. So this is a 2015 R3 here I picked up uh, just in the middle of uh, spring, not too long ago. It's a, a tiniest little thing because it's actually four inches lower in total seat height. Yeah, this R3 here is now four inches lower than stock height. It's a 2015 basic R3, nothing too special, nothing too extravagant about it. So I just finished washing it because it was a dirty little bird. Let's get on and let's go and ride. While we ride, yeah, I gotta, I gotta kind of dry it up there a little bit because like I said, I've just finished washing it. Uh, I didn't leave anything behind. No, anyways, alrighty. So, 2015 R3, it's absolutely fun, is all I can really say about it. I mean, uh, you know, like they say, and I'll tell you, it's true, it's more fun to go fast on a slow bike than it is to go slow on a fast one. Not that I'm saying that I don't like my MT-09, but I do absolutely love R3. Maybe not as much as my WR250, but it's still a very close second. Let's see, what have I done on this bike? This bike is absolutely pretty much bone stock, other than we got the Yoshimura pipe, which is just a slip on. Does it actually help in performance? No. Does it help in sound? Um, I think actually <laughs> it makes it even more quieter than the actual stock pipe. Kidding, however, um, probably not too far off of that. Uh, as you can may hear or may not hear, um, I am running this Yoshimura slip-on and I have actually removed what they would refer to as the DB killer, the insert, the baffle piece. Um, you can clearly hear nothing, <laughs> honestly. You really don't hear this bike. So Yoshimura pipes like that for the slip-on, it's really cosmetic than anything else. Um, even in regards to weight savings and stuff like that, I really don't see any difference than you just skipping your Big Mac for lunch. Other than that, what else have I done onto this bike? I have uh, did, let's see, yes, I have installed the Tail Tidy or the Tag Eliminator. Um, I used one from AliExpress, which was just like a 60 or $70 Tag Eliminator. Um, for the most part, uh, it's absolutely fantastic. Here, let's see if I can show it while we're on the red light. So. You can see this tag eliminator. Normally the one comes down really low and super big and all that. So pretty much that's what it is. I didn't want to do too much to the bike. Um, I still got the massive NASA docking station flashers. I have yet to uh, exchange those flashers. I do have some at home, which were the same on my WR. So I don't know if you've seen a video of that. I can't remember if I posted one. Anyways, um, I do have little super duper flashers uh, that look almost like the stock ones just much much smaller and they're like almost 15 bucks a pair I mean you can't go wrong with a price like that it's just fantastic I got to put those ones on the only thing you do need is uh, a flasher relay because they are LED and um, I got to find a kind of like a backing bracket I used to have a whole bunch of other backing brackets that I would use for my other bikes and I just kind of got rid of them all so now that I need them I don't have them. Shoot. So, hey, why don't you just pull right out in front of me there? I'm nuts. So, other than that, so, we are up to the pipe. Tag eliminator, lowering kit. Lowering kit, I actually, there's not that many companies, there's not too many companies out there that offer, ooh, skunk. Ah, stinky skunk. I don't know, what's worse, skunk or marijuana? Eh. Pick your poison, I guess it's the same. Anyways, sorry, getting back to the lowering kit. Um, like I was saying, there's not that many companies out there that offer, look at this. We are so surrounded by moron 
operators. You idiots. So, uh, anyway, back now for the third time. Uh, lowering kit. There isn't that many more. I'm going to say it again. There isn't that many options for the R3. I think out of everything that I kind of searched, I found two seem to be pretty legit companies. One was out of the US and the other one was out of UK. The one out of UK, that's United Kingdom or England, um, was a spring uh, relocation ring, I guess. Yeah, a spring relocation ring. So what that does is you would uh, compress your spring and then you would take the retaining ring that was holding the spring in place on your shop and you would replace it with this one which basically just has a deeper cup right so um look at that y'all anyways it has a um, yeah a deeper cup so basically what it does it sets your spring higher than uh, its position which then kind of in a way compresses your shock a bit more so you're basically compressing your shock which then gets you the lowering height that you're kind of looking for is that good? Uh, I mean, you're already compressing on your shock right now, so uh, I'm not really sure. I think you'll definitely be losing suspension travel. I'm not sure if there's a stopper where, you know, the actual swing arm would stop so it doesn't come into uh, more heavier contact and cause more damage, whatever. And the one from the US, which is from a company uh, by the name of T-Rex Racing. Why I'm saying that was well, because that's the company I went with. T-Rex Racing basically is a linkage block bracket that kind of relocates your uh, rear shock a little bit further to more towards the rear of the swing arm section. So basically, instead of being at an angle like that, you're now at an angle like that. Why? Well, because basically geom uh, the geometry if you're looking at the swing arm versus shock versus how it's all set together it basically brings the the swing arm up a little bit higher which then in turn lowers down the weight so that's the company i went with um in regards to pricing wise it was definitely the more affordable company and it was just kind of a little bit easier to obtain uh, again go keep in mind when you are doing uh, suspension drops you also need to then compensate for you know your slide stand and stuff like that so nice thing about t-rex racing is they actually have a kit that you can uh, purchase as a combo which is both lowering and the side stand so this way you're always getting a nice perfect uh, angle of your bike when you're parked sideways so i did that it's fairly simple straightforward it does recommend that you do uh, jack up the bike and stuff like that so you take the weight off of the wheel and you actually remove the wheel itself it makes it quite easy all in all uh, from bringing the bike into my shop onto the table jacking it up taking the wheel off um, and doing the side stand lowering kit everything one hour it was all done so pretty cool pretty straightforward pretty easy but you do need some tools uh, I'm sure there's uh, information that you can reach out to T-Rex Racing, get all that info and whatnot. So, we're here, we're done. Um, how did I gain my extra, because that was only an inch and a half, right? So almost an inch and a half um, in regards to lowering the bike. How did I gain the other inch was by lowering the front here. As you can see, I've just basically pulled the forks up to the front. So you lower the back, you lower the front, there you go, you're getting a whole lot more. Other than that, the last little portion in our regards to getting the lowering of the seat height was basically shaving the seat. So I had a spare seat, which was luckily enough for me. I then took the seat covering off. I hope that's not my bike speaking like that. That's somebody else's. Um, and I took a, uh, a turkey carving knife, an electric turkey carving knife, which I bought at Canadian Tire. And uh, I shaved it down. And I didn't like the turkey carving knife, so I returned it, got my money back. <laughs> so I got my job done there. Woohoo! Um, <laughs> shaved it all down, kind of smoothed it out. Unfortunately, I didn't have any kind of sanding block where I can get a real clean job. Uh, but for the most part, I mean, I was pretty accurate on the turkey cutting carving knife. So I got that job pretty nice. And then I uh, just recovered it back up. And that's where, like, literally, guys, like, I am sitting 
in the bike. Not on the bike, but in the bike. It's uh, absolutely uh, really comfortable. And for the most part, uh, riding it around and stuff like that, and the performance and, and the handling, it has not changed at all. So um, a big plus up for that. It's, uh, it's absolutely fantastic. I'm really, really thoroughly impressed in, in regards to that, uh, how well it works. So um, like I said, let me take this off and kind of go here. It's uh, really well done. Like it's, I still have like almost eight inches of clearance from the ground. So like in regards to going over speed bumps or any obstacles, like there's no worry in the world with that. Uh, but it definitely makes it so much lower, so much more uh, sleek and just easier for any of the uh, little people, um, you know, vertically challenged people, I would have to say, um, to, to actually get on it and physically ride. So it's definitely a pleasure to ride. I, I absolutely love the R3. It's such a an awesome city commuter putt putt bike. Uh, so we've still got some more things to do to it for sure. And uh, other than that, it's just get on and enjoy the ride and just have fun. So. Thank you very much for joining along with this little uh, ride and journey in the chat. Feel free to jot down any uh, comments and questions and I uh, will be more than happy to answer any of you guys. Other than that, be safe, be good, have fun. Thank you very much for your subscriptions. Thank you very much for your support. Until next time, hopefully tomorrow, Sunday is gonna be a really nice day. Let's get out and ride and enjoy, have fun, be good. See you next time, bye. Yeah, yeah, yeah.